What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to episode 91 of the Rise to Glory here with Gibraltar Apex and today I have for you guys the end of season live commentary for this, our 12th season here in Gibraltar and well, it's been a bit of an adventure so far. Another good year of course, if you missed last episode go check it out, you will see how we departed from the Champions League. Today I have the kind of annual double kind of live commentary of the two cup finals and actually they're going to be both against Gibraltar Lions of course, one of our rivals, so that's going to be something I guess to look forward to there. Either way, it's the end of season. First and foremost, we're going to look at the fixtures. Before we do that, I'm going to... What do I want to do to start? I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll have a look at the squad. And the reason we'll start with the squad is because I kind of feel like we, we should have a little bit of a rundown of who's who and who's performed well this year in the league and such. So anyway, if we look at goal scorers here, you'll see that our three top goal scorers are all players in on loan. Unfortunately, two of them are going to be departing at the end of the year. Daniele Russo, who of course we had on loan from Internacional. Uh, his loan comes to an end at the end of the year and unfortunately we are unable to permanently sign him nor renew our lease with him simply because... Well, Inter want to play him in their first team, which is hardly surprising because he got a hat-trick against them this year. Fortunately, Callum Oakley will be sticking with us. He got 50 goals in all competitions this year. The English striker played very, very well, of course, join us on loan from Arsenal. 35 goals and 17 assists in 22 is not bad from him. Cafe, our right midfielder, of course, the Brazilian here in his second year at the club, second year of his loan from Valencia, did well as well. 25 goals in the league, 35 in all competitions, 46 assists, including 32 in the Premier Mira division which was a record for the league and uh, yeah he leaves us with some happy memories. Paul Smith also up there definitely worth a mention. 34 goals for the left midfielder. 24 in the league that is his second best ever total in a year. He got 9 goals and 10 assists in the Champions League. A fantastic achievement really and uh, yeah if we look at the Champions League uh, I believe he'll be kind of in the top area of a few of these areas. Yeah, you can see here, top of the average ratings of 8.56 average rating. 10 assists to his name. Cafe also with 8. Paul Smith also got 9 goals, only eclipsed by one of Bayern Munich's strikers. Looking at the final of this year's Champions League, it's going to be between Real Madrid and Valencia. So a little bit of an interesting one there. Anyway, going back to the team, we've talked about the top goal scorers. A few of us, Jair did well, 16 goals and 13 assists. Tuzon did well when he was fit and actually played. Not really a first choice striker this year. Got 15 goals. If we look on the assist charts, we've already talked about a few of these names, but Bouchard, a new entry. 25 assists for the Canadian. He's had a great year at the club. Really developed as well. 23 years old now. Don't think we're going to see much more in the way of development from him, but he signed a new contract at the club. He doesn't enjoy big matches, inconsistent, but he is a world-class player. The fans really like him. I like him too. And if we look at it here, you can see he has a contract optional extension of three years, a one-year extension after 15 games of his last year of his contract, and he still has four years left on his current deal. So a player who we do have locked down for the long-term future, and I'm very glad of that. Anyway, a few other players. Jay Marriott, the right left-back for us, doing very well. Yet to play for Gibraltar's national team. Don't think he's declared himself for them yet, but I'm hoping that's going to be coming his way soon. Uh, and yeah, he didn't get quite as many assists in the league as you might expect. Only 16 this year, but he did get 10 in total, including two in the cup and two in continental competitions for us. Anyway, quick look at the average ratings. Usual suspects. Paul Smith, Cafe, Bouchard. Christian Mendes worth a little bit of a mention, of course. The young right midfielder from Colombia joined us. Uh, at the start of the year, he's developed quite nicely. You can see he's developed a few cons, certainly. His potential abilities declined a little bit from what it was kind of tipped to be initially. Joined us for £1.2 million. Definitely a long-term investment, this guy. Should get a little bit more first-team football next year with Cafe no longer be being in on loan. And yeah, we'll see how he gets on. He got six assists and two goals in seven league games. So for a 19-year-old, that is not too bad as his first ever year. I'll also talk quickly about Jason Hall, the young American, who we signed a few years ago now. In fact, I think we agreed to sign him a few years ago. This was his first year at the club. But he's played 16 league games for us and got an 8.32 average rating. Really good for the right back. Definitely a player who I want to give some first team football to. Definitely has room to develop as well, which is something that we definitely want to try and do if we want to get anything out of him. The fact he's got great natural fitness, he's athletic, can improve a slight amount in the future. He's a player who we need to give game time to really, I guess, flourish. Anyway, quick look at the league table in a little bit more detail than perhaps we have looked at it previously. Unfortunately for us, we could not keep our clean sheet run going. As you guys know, that's kind of been on my bucket list, I guess, of things I want to do on this save, is to kind of go unbeaten for a year without conceding a goal. This year, we conceded three goals, two against Gibraltar Lions, one against Glasses United. 
a little bit disappointing, but ultimately we won the league with a record points total, or joint record, I guess, because it was unbeaten. But we did also get uh, a record goal difference, I do believe, of 179. Last year, our goal difference was plus 162. The year before that, 156. And you can see years before that, you know, it was low 120. So we're still adding goals to our arsenal. We're still improving. And yeah, we're still progressing. Gibraltar Lions and Glasses United in second and third. Um, doing pretty well. I mean, looking at Gibraltar Lions here, they lost three games against us, drew once against Glasses United. And all in all, they did very well. Glasses United, a little bit of a surprise package, I feel like, this year. As I mentioned, they got a goal against us. If you look at their league history, you know, they've consistently finished third over the last few years, perhaps gone a little bit under the radar. You kind of look at them here, they've been bouncing back between kind of fifth and third and sixth. And they've been in the top half of the league for a while, but it's now up to them, I guess, to try and consistently finish in that kind of top three in the league and consistently get European football. Something I talked about right at the start of the year, and I completely forgot to talk about it just because it never came into... Uh, kind of being, I guess, was the fact that ultimately Gibraltar Lions didn't make it into the Europa League group stage. They got very close. They lost to AEK Athens 3-1 on aggregate in the end. I feel a little bit odd saying that now because I believe I talked about it many episodes ago at the start of the year and it's just something that completely escaped my mind. I guess with them not making any progress, I didn't feel like it was kind of worth telling you. But so you're aware, that's going on there. And whilst we're on the subject of Europe... We'll just have a look at the coefficients, because that's something that people like to have a look at. Uh, so if you don't know, I'll try and explain the coefficients as best as I can in a very simplest way. But what you need to know about coefficients is they are, they're basically uh, points that clubs are given and nations are given and leagues are given. Oh, no, leagues aren't given them. Nations are given them. But basically, they're like points you get for getting so far in competitions. And then I believe it's kind of the last six years worth of performances all the points are added up and so you get a total. So if you look at us, we currently sit at 51st in Europe. And as you can see, in 2021-22, we got 2.175, we'll call them coefficient points because I honestly, I don't know what the name of them is. You can see since then, obviously, we progressed slowly in Europe. Last year, we got 18.25 uh, points uh, for getting to the first knockout round. This year we got 18.275. I don't know if that's because some of the teams in our group in the Champions League were slightly higher in terms of where they sit in the coefficients. But basically what happens is these points are added together and uh, your ranking in Europe changes as a result of them and they're used for seedings, for stuff like the qualifications, for stuff like group stage draws, etc, etc. So you can see uh, last year or at the start of this year, our coefficients stood at just over 40. Now, this year we did well. We got 18.275 coefficient points. And so for next year, we will have 56.325 coefficient points, which if we had that last year, if we just have a quick look, uh, it would have sat us in about 38th, 37th, around kind of Stuttgart, Galatasaray, of course. As you can see, all these other clubs, their points are changing as well. But... Yeah, we're progressing up kind of national standings. You can see the teams are around. We have more coefficient points than Liverpool and Ajax. It's not too shabby, I guess. As I mentioned, you also get nation club coefficients. These are based off the entireties, the clubs of the nation who they represent and uh, how well they're doing. So you can see we got eight, uh, 0.875 back in the 21-22 year. For the last two years, we've got over six, which is pretty good going. And next year, we'll have 21 in total, which... Well, if we look at it, this year would have sat us right between Romania and Denmark, which is a pretty good achievement and would also move us into the top 20 nations in Europe. Worth noting, of course, when we started this save, uh, our coefficient points total meant that we were in 54th. So you can certainly get an idea of kind of how we're improving. The fact that we sit above teams such as Serbia or nations such as Serbia, Slovakia, um, Poland, you know, some fairly biggish European nations is a good achievement. And a sign of, I guess, the progress we are making. So anyway, that's the news on that front. Uh, I think we'll get into this first game. I'm sure there's going to be more to ramble on about. I'm going to submit my team here, which I'd already sorted. Alex Oakley up front. Paul Smith, Valverde, Bouchard and Cafe in the midfield. Marriott Friere, Frigere and uh, Jason Hall at right back. And then in goal, of course, we have Jung, the Swedish goalkeeper. So anyway, we'll see how we get on here. As I mentioned, Gibraltar Lions caused us some problems in the group uh, in the league. We were going for that unbeaten year, the kind of uh, unheard of, I guess, scenario where we just performed very well and we wouldn't concede a goal all year. Unfortunately, 
Uh, I guess having beaten Gibraltar Lions and kept clean sheets in our first two meetings against them in the league, in the very last league game we played against them, we only won it 4-2. Now, I say only, of course, that's still a pretty convincing win, but the fact we conceded two really was a little bit annoying, and we went on to concede one more goal against Glasses United, who finished third. Either way, hopefully we can get a pretty convincing performance here. We're on the attack. Cafe, back post. Smith hits the post. That should have been a goal. Somehow it went behind the keeper, hit the post and rolled gratefully, I guess, into the keeper's arms there. After half an hour, though, a little bit underwhelming. Would like to be ahead in this game. Worth noting to Brock Lions, they have strengthened their team this year. They are more competitive than they have been. We're not beating them 15-0 like we do some of the other teams in Gibraltar. But, I don't know, you still expect us to win this game, really. But there is a, I don't want to say there's an air of uncertainty. And you know, For example, in the league, I believe we've won 150 games now, plus... Uh, in a row, which is a crazy achievement. But there have been some nervy games this year where we've come close to, I don't want to say slipping up, but close to perhaps not getting the result we should get. Either way, it looks like we could be on course to get the result we should get here. Cafe with a goal at the back post, of course. His loan ending very, very soon. And it's going to be a sad day when he leaves us, but he might leave us with a parting gift here. The right midfielder slots it home. In terms of uh, the club stuff and kind of money we have for the coming year, of course, uh, the budgets now in FM, they get set a little bit in advance. That's been the case since kind of FM 15, whereby your board will set the initial budgets as soon as you kind of reach continental qualification or your league kind of position is secured. For next year, we have, I believe, around £7 or £8 million transfer budget and around a wage budget of £300,000 a year, which is a decent amount. Our current wage total sits at about £230,000 a week, which is... Not small, but it's it's not massive really for a team who are getting to the Champions League knockout stages like we are. To put it in perspective, you know, a £230,000 a week wage budget might be the kind of wage budget a team entering the English Premier League might have uh, for their first year in advance. Or they'd probably have a little bit more money than that. It's kind of if a team was getting relegated down into the Championship as Alex scores a great goal there. I'm looking forward to seeing this one in 3D. Uh, of course, a record transfer, Alex, this year getting a goal. But yeah, our wage budget is kind of a low-end Premier League side. Perhaps a team that's been relegated to the Championship from the Premier League would be a better kind of description. But either way, Alex, the record goal scorer, getting a goal there. Of course, joined us for £5 million. Quite a hefty fee that we spent in January on a player who perhaps hasn't played as much as I'd like. But with Daniele Russo leaving us at the end of the year, he is going to get more opportunities up front. I also kind of feel like it's worth noting that Given our current kind of scenario where we have a lot of money from our performances in Europe and how we've got on in Europe, um, we just don't have players who we can realistically sign all that often to kind of spend our money really wisely. You know, the cheap players, um, you know, playing in Portugal and Holland leagues where the wage demands aren't quite as kind of high and as a result we can kind of lure players from there. Um, the players just aren't interested in coming and as a result it means that sometimes I have to overpay just to help improve the squad, which is a little bit of a shame. But, um, you know, we'll, we'll see how we get on. I do feel like it's worth noting, and I talked about this a long time ago in the save, but when I've done my Gibraltar save, uh, or when I did my Gibraltar save back in FM14, and I know this was also the case in FM15, you get to a stage where the league rep gets so high, a TV deal is signed in the league, whereby every team gets in the region of £80 million a year. Now, when that happens... Things will slowly get a little bit more kind of interesting domestically. And I don't know how soon this is going to happen, if I'm honest. Obviously, the league is progressing. We are progressing in Europe. We're boosting the profile uh, of our nation in Europe. But we do need some help from the likes of Gibraltar Lions when they compete in Europe. But when we get this TV deal, the fact that every single team competing is going to be getting, hopefully, so much money, assuming it's still the case. Because, of course, I don't know of anyone doing this kind of save in FM... Um, kind of this year yet who has got to that stage but if it does happen if we do get that tv deal uh suddenly every team in gibraltar is going to go pro you'll start to see them sign in league one and hopefully league two kind of quality players initially and from there we should start to get a really competitive competitive domestic division and hopefully the whole nation's coefficient is going to rise and well what will come with that is a really competitive division but hopefully also some european success and Maybe, just maybe, if it can kind of all come together, a kind of Gibraltarian Super League, where you have all these teams earning buckets load, bucket loads of money. They're throwing money at the club. You know, if you're getting £80 million a year in TV money, you can spend a million pounds a week on wages, which is a Premier League kind of budget, and still be making money and still have 20-odd million to kind of still spend. 
If that happens, things will get interesting. Now, unfortunately for us, as we discovered with Gibraltar Lions, when they had their Sugar Daddy takeover, the AI isn't that great when it comes to transfers and signing the best players. Um, however, over time, we should see, start to see the overall quality of the league just rocket. Either way, as I've been rambling on, we now make it 3-1. For the arrow with the goal, but actually Gibraltar Lions hit the crossbar just a second ago while the score was still 2-1. They pegged us back once whilst I was rambling away. The header there by Friere, though, who, of course, will be leaving us at the end of the year to return to Manchester United. He le leaps like a salmon. He scores, makes it 3-1, and hopefully that's game, set, and match. Of course, I am going to cut out the period between this and our second game of this episode against Gibraltar Lions. I'm sure I've got a few other things I will ramble on about during the live com. I feel like with these games... They're fairly routine for the most part, and it gives me a nice chance just to kind of sit down, talk about the save, what might be coming up, what we might come to expect. In terms of the immediate future, obviously, as I mentioned, the TV deal, I don't know when it's going to come. It might come this season, it might come in five seasons. It's, it's a bit of a mystery, really. But what I will say is that when it happens, things are going to be interesting. But in the meantime, it'll be interesting to, just to see how Gibraltar Lions get on in Europe. I'm hoping they can continue to improve their squad. They are slowly you know, increasing their rep in Europe. They were so close, of course, to get into the group stage this year. But yeah, that could be a very intriguing one to see how it plays out. Either way, we're bringing the ball forward here. It's full time, however. It's finished 3-1 here at the Victoria Stadium. Uh, pretty happy of how the team played, of course. This stadium used to kind of play home to ourselves, but, uh, of course, we moved to the, the well the Space Park fairly recently. A little bit of news on that front. Uh, I made a few board requests over the year, uh, and as you can see, our training facilities are set to be improved again. That is going to be done in October, and the stadium is being expanded to 11,500 seats, which we probably won't get that close to filling initially, but the fact the board are willing to kind of back me and increase the stadium size is very, very pleasing. And that's actually going to be done in August. So unlike this year's kind of stadium renovations where we were playing at the Victoria Stadium all the way through till March, this shouldn't have too much of an effect into next year. I will just look at the facilities real quick because, as you can see here, we, we've increased and improved a lot of things, you know, a fair bit, I think it's fair to say, over the years. And if we look at where we stand now... In terms of our facilities real quick, you can see that we have good training facilities, top youth facilities, exceptional junior coaching, established youth recruitment, and uh, average corporate facilities. I know I didn't talk about Regen Day this year. People have probably mentioned that in the comments of previous videos. Bottom line is, because we're in Gibraltar, because we are in a country that holds and has a population of 30,000 people, we're never going to get a horde of outstanding regens despite our amazing facilities. It's just the reality of it. We haven't, unfortunately, in a few years now since Gary uh, had a non-Gibraltarian player generate at our youth team either, which is a little bit of a shame. I did not realise how big our youth team's got. I really should release the players who aren't ever going to play for us. No, I mean, no wonder they feel like they're not getting enough love in <laughs> coaching, because... How many how many players do we have in our under twenty ones? This is this is where it becomes apparent that I really should just perhaps look after my team a little bit better. How many? How many? Ninety two. I mean, it's that's not. We could have just released them all, couldn't we? We could just re let's not do that. A few of them are out on loan, to be fair. But yeah, anyway, I'm going to skip forward to the next game, guys. We've got more games to talk about. It's already 18 minutes, and I feel like I've rambled a lot, but we've covered some good subjects. Hopefully, we'll cover some more in a second. I'm going to go forward, and uh, yeah, I will talk to you guys in just a second for the second game of this episode against Gibraltar Lions. Okay, guys, so we are back uh, just before we get into the game. All the awards for Gibraltar are always done between these two cup finals, so I thought we'd go through them. You can see the one here. Player of the year went to Cafe, Callum Oakley and Russo getting runner-up. Oakley got top goal scorer with 35 league goals. Russo also got 35 league goals. Cafe getting 25. Bouchard won Young Player of the Year. A good achievement for the Canadian. I don't believe that's the first time he's won this kind of award. If we look here, you can see he's actually won it the last four years. So he's kind of familiar with it at this point. In terms of the goal of the season, it's one of those things we never seem to win. We did, however, get first division manager of the year, which is actually an award we've won every single year. We've been in the top flight. Would like to keep that going for as long as possible. In terms of team of the year, we had nine of the 11 players. Unfortunately, Smith at left mid and, well, Andy Marriott or basically any of our le any left back in our squad didn't get the kind of left-hand side spot. So apparently that is where I need to improve <laughs> for next year. But you can see the rest of the team dominated by ourselves. Holmes did like to... Com well, I was about to say Holmes did something. He didn't do anything. He just complains. Jimmy Holmes. We signed him in January. He's not done a lot. I guess he hasn't done anything, has he? That's why he's complaining. 
uh, but I might have to let him go. Worth noting, Jabril Lyons showing a little bit of interest in a few of our players as well anyway. So yeah, that's a little bit about what's going on there. We didn't talk about the finances earlier, but just so you guys can see, we sit with an overall balance of £14 million, but we'll, we'll have some Champions League money coming in. And uh, our transfer budget, I mentioned it earlier, I might have been a little bit off, but you can see here, £6.2 million to spend. Wage budget is 290000 and we currently spend 230000 Anyway, let's get into the Rock Cup final against Gibraltar Lions. Of course, that last game we played against them was in the Gibraltarian Senior League Cup. I think for today's game, we are going to give Russo his kind of final send-off. Unfortunately, Cafe with an injury, uh, probably not going to be able to start this game, which is a little bit of a shame. So that last game, probably his last ever game for the club. I've got a few players on international duty, which is a little bit annoying to deal with. It might leave us without an out-and-out -out right midfielder, but we can play Enderson there. But yeah, all in all, I kind of feel like it's been a good season. We'll play JJ as well. He deserves a game. Um, what else do I want to do? It's really annoying having players on international duty. I'm not sure what tournament it is. Should we check? Should we, should we have a look? Italy. What, where are Italy playing? Wait, Walter Del Sol's playing for the under-21s, I assume. So what are they doing? What are the under-21s in? Okay, they're playing in the under-21 champion, European Championships. Well, not all our players are there for sure. But that's where he is. Right. Team. Am I happy with this team? Kind of am. Kind of am. I'm going to keep playing Jason Hall at right back. We'll go with this. Russo playing his last ever game. Put in the comments now how many goals you think he'll get in his kind of final game. He's done quite well for us over the last three years. Over 75 league goals for the club. In 58 games. I mean, I'd love to sign this guy permanently, but it is probably not going to be possible. He really is one of Italy's hot prospects, and Inter definitely have high hopes for him. Anyway, let's get into the game. A little bit nervous here, but I'm hoping to continue on from where we kind of left off last time out. Of course, we've already beaten Gibraltar Lions here once. They are still a rival. I don't believe they're a fierce rival yet. Whether or not this cup final could swing things, we will check uh, on the club general info if I remember after this game. But yeah, it's kind of cool to have the dynamic rivalries this year in FM. I'm hoping, you know, over the next few years, once uh, the league gets a bit more competitive again with TV money, uh, that we will kind of, you know, make a few more rivals. It'd be nice to have like a little dynamic ecosystem of rivalries in Gibraltar. Either way, Alex gets his fifth goal of the season. An ideal start for us. Three minutes in, he gets the goal. I've been playing uh, the 4-4-2 counter a little bit. You'll notice I'm playing it here against Gibraltar Lions. We played the attacking 4-4-2 in the first kind of game against them in the Senior League Cup. Uh, I actually had it set to counter, you might have noticed, before changing it. But I have actually had some success using it just in uh, Gibraltar. And I was actually using it when I was trying to keep the clean sheets going. And when we were trying to get the... You know, towards the end of the year, I think we had five games left to try and keep clean sheets, and I decided to play on the counter. Ultimately, didn't really pay off for us. Perhaps even cost us, you know, our kind of goal scoring ability to some extent. But I don't know. We still seem to score goals with it, and we're on the attack again here. Enderson. I mean, how was Alex missed there? How was he actually missed there? That was an awful miss. Enderson with a speculative long shot hit the post, trickled along the kind of goal line. And it just got hammered into the post from point blank range. Not entirely not entirely convincing right there. Either way, we deal with the ball quite nicely here. Now can we break Russo? This is his final game, of course. It'd be nice to see him get a goal or two, although giving the ball away like that, not not in the kind of the 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 script, I guess you could say. The script here is he gets a hat trick and we all kind of you know cry a little bit. We throw him up in the air like when Levetti left PSG back in February. And um, you know, you know, there's a t solitary tear that runs down his cheek because uh, he knows that we helped him develop into the player he is today. Either way, he gets an assist there. Alex with his second goal of the game, a superb assist, says the commentator. I'll tell you what, I think we're going to switch to the 4-4-2 attack, and I want to give Russo as many opportunities to score. And well, if we go on the attack, may maybe he can have a few more chances. Either way, we've dominated this first half. It's the 40th minute. Might have a chance before half time to maybe add a few. Certainly want to keep a clean sheet. Uh, in this game if we can, particularly after uh, conceding previously. And actually, we might have a chance here on the break. Alex, options on ahead, threads it through to Russo, through on goal. He hits the woodwork. We've hit the woodwork three times already in the first half here. This could be a lot more convincing result. Fiore out with a facial injury, actually. I feel like we'll give Melvin Thomas a rare nod. 
the centre back perhaps not played as much as he'd like. You're probably wondering, Jack, where's your other centre back? The, I can't, is it Helm? I can't even remember his name. That's terrible, isn't it? I can't remember one of my own players' names. The German centre back we have on loan from Chelsea. Is it Hellman? I can't remember it. That's bad, isn't it? It's like when you have a school... I don't know. I was about to say it's like when you're a school teacher, but I can't imagine many of my viewers know what, what it's like to be a school teacher, but it's just like you just kind of forget a name. It's Helmers. Helmers is the name. I'm 90% sure of that, but uh, he broke his leg. So that wasn't great. And uh, that's why he's not playing today, actually. He's out for a number of months with that injury, as, as you'd expect with a broken leg. It's not a minor injury, really. Anyway, we're on the attack here. Russo cuts inside. I mean, he could have scored a beautiful goal there. Unfortunately, puts it wide. The fact it is only 2-0 and we've had six clear-cut chances is a tiny bit inexcusable, if you ask me. Definitely want us to step it up if we can in the remainder of this game. There is 35 minutes left to try and, I guess, get a few goals if we can. Just make things as convincing as possible. But it's not looking so great. I mean, defensively, you know, we've not really been tested this game, I think it's fair to say. But we want more goals. We want Alex to get a hat trick. We want Russo to get a final goal. He might get a chance here as well. Russo hits it. I mean, has he just hit the woodwork again? I think the keeper has tipped that onto the crossbar. That is actually outrageous. Let's check. I think, I think you can add a type thing for woodwork hit. Woodwork, confirm. We've hit the woodwork four times. I mean, that, that's a little bit ridiculous. A little bit ridiculous right there. Either way, 18 minutes left. Not looking up. We're going to get a classic result here. One tip for the archive. Going to bring in Cafe despite the fact he's injured. Want to give him a little bit of a final nod, I guess. And I think we'll also take off... I was about to say we'll take off Russo, but I still want him to get a goal. I thought we'd take him off, you know, go out off the pitch to a ripple of applause... But I want him to get a departing goal and then we can take him off and the fans can serenade him with some applause. But the Italian, he, he wouldn't want to come off now. He wants a goal. You can see him, number 11, constantly moving, constantly looking for opportunities. And he's bringing the ball forward here. Can he find a finish? He can't. He's fouled. And Alex is going to take the penalty because he's a greedy son of a bitch. Pardon my French. And he wants the hat trick. He shoots. He hits it down the middle. It's a good goal. But I'm not happy. Give it to Russo, Alex. I mean, you've got a hat trick, but it doesn't even count, mate. It's the end of the season. The Rock Cup counts for nothing. I mean, I'm not happy about how he's dealt with that. Not happy. Should have gone for the kind of Messi to Suarez layoff to allow Russo to get that kind of um, hat trick. And unfortunately for us, Russo also takes uh, corners. So he's not going to be in the box for the chance there, which I think hit the woodwork again, which is typical really, isn't it? Either way, can, can we have another chance for Russo? He's in the he's number 11. He's on his own. Can, Alex, whip it in. Bouchard. Marriott. Tries to thread in Russo. Cleared away, but only as far as Melvin Thomas, the one and only. Now can we make something happen? Smith to Cafe. Hall. Cafe. And it's deflect. I think Cafe's going to be... Yeah, he's not going to be given the goal. I thought Cafe, you know, on his final game, he'd be given a goal. He's not been... I assume he'll get an assist for that. A little bit of an odd goal. This cross just deflects in, I think, and it just creeps in the bottom corner. Keeper should probably get down to it, if we're being honest, but I don't know. It's a, It's been a long season. Gibraltar Lions, they're already out of this. And with three minutes left, we're going to win 4-0, and uh, it's, a, it's a good result. We'll take it. Would have liked a few more. Probably should have had a few more as well. But um, it wasn't to be today, and it wasn't to be that Russo would get a goal. He did get two assists, to be fair, to the Italian Stallion. But yeah, that's going to wrap up our domestic year. We celebrate a famous quadruple. That is another kind of uh, rock cup for the archive. You can see how we've done here. We've won it a fair bit over the years, haven't we, really? And we've won it for the seventh consecutive year. If we look at the Senior League Cup as well, I believe that is going to have some kind of similar thing where it's we've won it in the last seven years we've only won this in the last six years actually of course we lost in back-to-back -back finals in 2000 and 2021 For, almost to have forgotten about those games either way you'll notice the rock cup rep has increased a lot and we actually get some fairly decent prize money for winning that competition now six hundred thousand pounds it's a pretty hefty sum really glenn gilbert praises me well i appreciate it glenn you know you've gone from our hearts but I, i'll still remember your free crossing i'll never i'll never forget you glenn ever i feel a little bit sad inside now we'll continue forward just to get to the end of season kind of review stuff where we can see 
how we've done. But uh, yeah, we get an annual fee played by Buraspor. That's nice. The Turkish Giants giving us a little bit of cash. Of course, we want to see our end of season roundup. Our overall best 11. Here it is. Romero, Marriott, Melvin Thomas, Danny Evans, Morgan, Lorenko, Bouchard, Gary, Smith, Peachman, Connolly. Worth noting with Gary, a little bit of sad news. As you can see, contract runs out fairly soon. We could maybe sign him back, but you're probably wondering, what's the sad news, Jack? Why Why does he look so crap? Well, I'll, I'll tell you why. He broke his leg, boys. And he tore a calf muscle as well. Two very long-term injuries in his three years so far. Uh, playing in Qatar really hurt him, unfortunately. Anyway, if we look at the best 11, where are they now? You can pause it if you want to take a look. Some people are still obsessed with Felix in the comments. He's still at West Brom. He's still kind of their second choice kind of goalkeeper. I've been trying to sign him. He doesn't want to come, though, unfortunately. In our end of season awards, kind of interesting to see such a split on fans play of the year. Don't know if this is just me, but it's usually kind of quite a, you know, there's always a runaway leader, I guess, but to have a player on 34, 29 and 24% respectively, pretty decent. Christian Mendes got signing of the season. Paul Smith's goal against Sporting, the goal of the year. I feel like we should watch this again. It was a 91st minute goal last episode, so it's fresh in the memory. But it was such a good goal. It's worth watching again, isn't it? It's worth watching again and applauding because Alex crossed it to the back post and then it was just Paul Smith on the half volley, bang. Keeper didn't even move. I enjoyed that goal. If only we'd gone through that goal. It was Gerard-esque, wasn't it, really? Moment to forget was only beaten Gibraltar Lions 2-0. Our average attendance, it says it's only 36% full. It's worth noting that we were playing in the Victoria Stadium throughout the season all the way until March. And the Victoria Stadium only holds 2,500 people. So that's why that average attendance is so low. Anyway, looking at other stuff, we, we, we won everything that you'd expect us to win. We got where the board wanted us to get. The board consider us untouchable. Of course, our squad status and our club status um, has increased so much while we've been at the club, which is hardly surprising. And um, as a result, the, the board, they absolutely love us. Either way, I think like if we continue once or twice more, there might be a little bit more in the way of news items and stuff. I don't want to, you know, sit here rambling for too long and just spamming continue trying to get to certain news items that may or may not appear. But, um, yeah, it's good. Stadium uh, expansion is going to happen. That's 3,300 more seats being added. It's going to take five months. So that's going to be good. Board to upgrade the training facilities. That's 1.8 million. We kind of already knew about all of that going on. But it's good to see it actually kind of coming into place. And, um, you know, it's onwards and upwards, really. Our, our, to get to our stadium capacity now is going to be around, I think, 11,000 at the Space Park. I noticed a news item said it was limited to expanding to 13,000. Some stadiums in FM do have limitations on how much they can be expanded. I'm not sure how accurate that is in this case or the exact mechanics behind the whole limit on expansion. I know you can only build a new stadium once every 20 years. But if I recall correctly, when the stadium was first finished, we got told there was a limit on expansion of 11,000 seats, which we've already surpassed. And, well, it's since been risen, uh, uh, what would you call it, raised uh, to 13,000. So I'm not entirely sure if it will raise again. If it's limited to 13,000, it'll be a bit of a shame. Obviously, we won't complain too much about the space park, but it'd be nice to make it as big as it needs to be rather than being limited, I guess, on how much it can be expanded. Anyway, I feel like I'm just continuing on here, really not knowing what I'm uh, looking to continue towards. We'll go forward once more. If nothing comes up, we'll, we'll wrap up the live com there. If there's any important news, you know, I'll get screenshots of it or whatever. There is the, the prize money we get. I think if we continue maybe once more, we might get the coefficient updates, but we do get the expected around, or just shy of £5 million uh, in Champions League TV money, which is going to be nice. That will cover both, of course, our stadium expansion and our training facilities improvements, and the fact that they're covered is very, very nice indeed. Anyway, Smith sets a Champions League average rating record. He surpassed Messi. Paul Smith, greater than Messi. Better average rating, an 8.47 in eight, appearance, eight appearances. That is not too shabby, really, is it? Uh, in terms of best goal, oh, apparently Paul Smith wasn't even in the running. Outrageous. The dream team for this competition doesn't contain any of our players. Not not entirely surprising, really, is it? Got a few bids for Jair going on. We're going to reject them. I don't really want to sell him. 
If we look here, you can see our end of season Champions League fair, uh, fair play. We can't lose more than 3.5 million. We've made a profit of just shy of 30 million. We avoid a tax hit. That's good. Commercial summary. We've got some new sponsorships going on. The uh, new main kit sponsor is double what it was worth before. You can see all our sponsorships raising a little bit. Um, last year's annual kind of total was £70,000 in sponsorships, which is tiny. Uh, this year it's going to be 110000 uh, So that's pretty decent too. Anyway, I want to keep continuing to the coefficient, so I apologise. I'm going to I'm going to keep spamming spacebar and continue to ramble as far as I need to, and for as long as I need to go, unless it gets a little bit silly. For some reason, I have the date kind of the 20th of June in my head, as when coefficients change and are announced. I really don't. I really hope it isn't going to be that long, but we'll find out, I guess. It's kind of nice to pull back the curtain and let you guys into the joyous task that is just continuing in this save, which you have to do a fair bit. Um, especially because of how long our off season is. But anyway, we have got the under twenty ones uh, European games going on, which probably isn't helping for the simulation speed, and does make me more and more tempted just to wrap up the episode here. But I want to see the coefficients. I want to. I want to see them. I want to. You know, I want an update. We have got a few players. I didn't talk about some of the players we've got coming in in the future. We should. We should do that now. Let's have a look. Uh, so we've actually got two players coming in. We've got Kevin Hall. Here, who is a young uh, American, and the other player that we have here is Nick Austin, who's a maybe a talented Australian striker. He's pretty good, 17 determination, some decent technicals, good pace. Uh, as I said, only 17. Played a few times for the under 21s as well, which is how we discovered him. So that's pretty good. Leeds United make a bid for Jer. I mean, that is a shocking offer for a player who we had a bid of nine million pounds for previously, or seven million pounds. Bouchard getting some tiny bids. It really annoys me. Some people have asked in the past, you know, why are players valued so low in your team? The reason they're valued so low is because of how low the reputation of our league is. And just kind of, uh, I guess, our team relative to the rest of the world. Tuzon having a few bids. They're not great. Uh, Bouchard, Newcastle have made a, <laughs> a joke of a bid. Jair having some tiny offers. Anderson wants to discuss going to Espanyol. I'm going to tell him you won't get enough first-team football. Uh, he really wants me to go. He he re re he doesn't want me to go. He wants to go. Right. So Espanyol might be coming in for Anderson, and he wants to go. So you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna set the asking price at twenty million. <laughs> I mean, they're probably gonna bid like a tiny fee now, and he's gonna get unhappy with me. How long's left of his current contract? How long is left? Two years. I'd probably hold on to him for the two years, if I'm honest. A little bit selfish, won't get much money for him, but I feel like it would be worth it. Now Tuzon wants to go. I mean, the issue I've got here is okay. Is that I have a lot of players in my squad who are very good who want to leave, and I don't know if, if for how much longer I'm going to be able to tell them um, that the... Um, kind of club that, that are making the offer won't give them enough first team football either way Russo unable to renew his loan Cafe unable to renew his loan they all want to give these players first team football Almeida didn't really have an impact for us so I probably wouldn't want to loan him anyway and Chelsea would want to play him anyway Friere who we had on loan from Manchester United I guess this is going to be the same story it's a little bit of an issue with these loanies they do very well at us and then uh, their clubs decide that they don't want to loan them out again, which is a bit of a shame. But, you know, we, we, we know it's the case. It's been the, a pattern for the last few years, really, that I have players who are loan in. They play well. They go back to their kind of club they're contracted to and perform quite reasonably. And as a result, we could never re kind of renew the loans, which is a bit of a shame. No offers for Henderson. That's what I was hoping we're going to see, although we then get an, an offer immediately. And they're two awful offers. Awful offers. Paul Smith having an awful offer. Bouchard. I find it funny, okay, that we had a bid from some clubs of 19k for Bouchard, but then teams like Everton bid 7 million. Like, it's a very bizarre kind of situation. It's to do with the rep. It clearly screws up the transfer AI a little bit in terms of it doesn't really know how much to offer players. Either way, I'm going to. I don't want to transfer list Anderson. I just want to set his asking price really high. I don't know why I offered him to clubs. He's unhappy. Um, 
he wants to he wants to he wants to have a dressing room revolt. I mean What do I say? You're trading with the kids. Oh dear. Oh we've got a mutiny boys. That's gonna be fun to deal with over the summer. Might have to sell Enderson now. Kinda wanted to hold on to him, but I mean, we've not done a great job of keeping him happy, I think it's fair to say. He joined us on a free two years ago. If we could get five million for him, I'd sell him. To be fair, depending on how much of a fuss he causes, I might have to accept a little bit of a a, a lower amount for him. But I don't know. This this is what I deal with on a yearly basis behind the scenes. You don't see this. The, the grind of trying to juggle all these players who are really unhappy. Bouchard finally got his first ever Canadian international goal it took 21 caps for him to get it it's not great but uh, at least he's done it now i want to praise him for it but i know i think it was last year like the play be like oh, i scored for myself not you but i feel like they fixed it let's see if they fixed it okay well never mind either bouchard loves me or they fixed the issue because there was a problem some of you guys can probably confirm in the comments if a player scored an international goal and you congratulated him He'd, it would come up with like a response saying, um, oh, I scored for my nation and myself and not for you. It was a very kind of schneidy message. We've had £3.5 million bid for Jair. What did I set the asking price at? His asking price is £7.5 million. That is what, ex what I'd accept for him. Hearts bidding for Paul Smith. Jay Marriott making a first appearance for Gibraltar. That is pretty cool to see another Gibraltarian kind of convertee. There are a few others, actually, who have kind of come and uh, converted. Uh, you've got Jeremy Braun, who's kind of switched allegiances. And as a result, these players who are switching allegiances definitely add a lot to the kind of Gibraltarian national team. And it'll be interesting to see if they can raise in the rankings at all. You can see they only lost to Poland 2-0, which isn't that bad, really. If we look at the history of Gibraltar and uh, where they sit in the world rankings, you can see it's been a bit of a, a turbul turbulent time for them, really. They've declined over the last few years. And they'll be wanting to set the record straight. Currently sit 172nd in the world rankings. When you compare that to what kind of the peak where they got to 144th, that is a bit of a drop off, really. But um, you know, with these new players taking up Gibraltarian nationality, there is a a, a chance, I guess, uh, that we could, we could see them climb again. I'd like to see them get into the kind of region of 140. I'm now gonna, of course, remind you whilst this game auto saves. If you don't have auto saves on. Please put them on in your football manager game, even if you just have it on rolling saves for free saves. You can do it in your preferences. The amount of people I see who get corrupt saves and they lose all their progress and they're like 10 years into their save. Like, don't even run the risk, you know. Get your saves on a memory stick. You know, don't just have one save file for the entire save. I've learned, I've learned from my mistakes that that is not the best way to do things. It really doesn't work. And uh, you'll be filled with regrets if you do kind of lose a save as a result of it. Anyway, I'm hoping we're getting close to the coefficient news item now as I take a sip of my uh, from my mug. There is, a, there is a reason I don't normally commentate this part of the year. And the reason is quite simple. It lasts blooming ages going through all these items. Bouchard, bid, made, rejected. In terms of competition ratings and rankings, you can see... The Premier Division rose by 13 places to 64th. This is what we were waiting for. So where does that see us sit now? We are better than the Kazakhstani Premier League. And we're almost as good as the second tier of uh, Greece. So a little bit of progress being made there. In terms of European rankings, we've moved up 12 places to 39th in the world. Which is kind of nice. Gibraltar Lions as well, most improved. Moving from 315th to 216th in the rankings. So that's pretty good to see. Um... Whether or not we're going to see a change, I guess, in um, our nation coefficient, if we if we have a look. So that was the club rankings change, and the fact Gibraltar Lions raised or got risen is nice. If we look at nation club, co is it club coefficients? Oh, no, qualification places. This is what I want to take a look at. So you can see currently we are the 19th highest rep league in Europe. We currently get one uh, second qualifying round in the Champions League kind of spot. And then we also get alongside that one second qualifying round in the Europa League and two first round qualifying spots in the Europa League. You can actually see that going forward, if we can raise our profile by just the tiniest little bit, really, we are going to see some progress whereby um, we'll have no no extra spots in the Europa League. But uh, what we'll see is Gibraltar Lions or whoever finishes second get to the third qualifying round off the bat. And that'll be pretty good when that happens. 
assuming that happens soon. Anyway, I'm going to continue once more to round off this episode. My voice has almost completely gone again. I'm still not 100% well, uh, as you guys may have noticed in the last few commentaries. You know, I've been, not been, not been at my finest. Either way, we're going into the new season now. I, I need to call a timeout and end it here, boys. I appreciate if you've watched to the end. A bit of a rambly end, but sometimes it's nice just to have a general chat and show you guys what's going on behind the scenes. In terms of what we're going to be doing over the summer, I'm going to be trying to sign some players, of course, see what we can do. Um, but yeah, all in all, another good season at the club. We've done we've done pretty well. You know, to get to the first qualifying or the first knockout round is good. Hoping for more of the same really next year. So yeah, that is all from me. If you have enjoyed the video, you know, smash the like button. I do appreciate it, as I mentioned, if you got to this point. It's been a rambly episode, but sometimes rambly can be good. So yeah, thank you for watching. It is me, Jack, and uh, hopefully I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.